This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Samsung Galaxy S2 for AT&T. Now, every carrier is going to have some form of the Galaxy S2, only Verizon hasn't said what they're doing yet, but they'll probably have an LTE version. And we looked at Sprint's recently, got AT&T's here, and T-Mobile's is coming up. This one stays the truest to the original European-Asian version that was released, oh, about four months ago, though. It sticks with the 4.3-inch display rather than enlarging it to 4.5 like Sprint and T-Mobile did. Same really exact shape right here. That There's no little center home button, but other than that, you've got a very rectangular phone. And typical of Samsung, an incredibly slim phone. That's only a third of an inch thin. Got the same back style here with the textured plastic back, the little rigid section over here with the gunmetally gloss plastic look to it. 8 megapixel shooter on the back. Power button placed on the side as Samsung likes to do, though I find that a little bit annoying because when you grab it, pull it out of your pocket, purse, whatever, you tend to hit either the power or the volume, and you never want to hit both of those at once, generally speaking. But speaking of the volume buttons, here they are right here. Headphone jack is up top where the headphone jack belongs, very convenient. There's a mic hole here, and another one down here, a little hard to see, dark plastic. So you've got noise cancelling dual microphones. Speaker is back here micro USB port and that combines to also function as an MHL adapter which is an optional accessory so you can plug this into an HDMI monitor or TV using that adapter. Front here you can see we have standard capacitive touch buttons looks pretty much like other Samsung phones that we've seen and the gorgeous Super AMOLED Plus display. Again it's 4.3 inches a little bit smaller than T-Mobile and Sprint's offering but we don't really mind because they're all the same resolution, which is 800 by 480. That's a pretty good resolution, but not as good as the QHD displays that we've been seeing. And Samsung's touch with software already enlarges a lot of the font. So when you go up to 4.5 inches, things are starting to look pretty giant, and they look a little bit more down to normal size on this. Phone has HSPA Plus 4G, not LTE, sorry, and you can see the HSPA Plus indicator up here. And it has pretty good receptions. Samsung's GSM phones are usually moderate on reception, but this one is better than average for reception. Call quality is also very nice. Though the speakerphone can sound a little harsh and blown out if you set it to max volume. But speaking directly to the handset, call quality is very good on incoming and outgoing ends. The phone runs on Samsung's Exynos dual-core CPU at 1.2 GHz. That is the fastest CPU you're going to find in an Android phone right now and it scores 3175 on Quadrant. To give you an idea, the Motorola Atrix scores around 2200, which is pretty good with its dual-core 1 GHz Tegra CPU, but that this guy right here is that much faster. Of course, there's a question about how much speed you need in a phone. They're already pretty responsive and zippy, but you will notice the difference when you're playing Adobe Flash or something like 1080p high-profile video, which we'll demo. It scores 78 on Linpack, by the way, and usually score in the high 50s is pretty good up to the 60s, so 78 is pretty rocking. That said, take a look at the application bundle here. There were no games bundled. We put a few on here ourselves. Well, you, you get words with friends, the free edition, but nothing that really shows off the gaming capabilities of the phone, but it is very good at playing 3D demanding games. In terms of AT&T software, we have AT&T's barcode scanner, which is pretty handy, actually. Their family map, AT&T Navigator, their own uh, recommended featured apps here, which takes you to the Android market to purchase those. The ubiquitous Yellow Pages mobile and live TV, which is streaming and on-demand TV and movies uh, powered by Mobi TV. That's not available yet, since we have this phone a week before it's actually going to be released, but that's usually a fairly entertaining experience. Neat thing is, if you don't like some of those AT&T apps, they are installable, so if you're getting a little tired of the bloatware, be happy. You can take it off this phone. You get all the standard Android apps on here, of course, Google Maps and Navigation, Google Search, the YouTube Player, Google Talk, and it supports Google Talk video chat with the front-facing camera. Very cool, since it runs Android OS 2.3.4 Gingerbread. And it has the 8 megapixel camera on back that can shoot 1080p video. And this is one of the best camera phones on the U.S. market. It takes really nice photos. Sharp, but not over sharp and very colorful. And a 1080p video is reasonably smooth. It's still, you know, camera phone quality. It's not exactly TV show quality, but it's pretty darn good. In terms of Samsung software, of course, you get their TouchWiz UI enhancement. And as you can see here, 
they've actually improved on that. You don't have the strange little colored backgrounds behind every icon anymore. It's a lot cleaner. And the widgets have gotten smaller and a bit more lightweight. We have a variety of clocks you can choose from here. That's a nice, pretty simple one that we've selected. You can add buddies over here. There's a standard Facebook widget that's installed. This is the AT&T Featured Apps widget, which you, of course, can get rid of if you're not interested in that. And we've got this little handy notepad that Samsung provides here, so you can just tap here and get a bigger view and start entering your note and save it. So, handy for notes to self. Voice command bar right here for voice talk, voice command in driving mode. And this is an interesting one, the task manager here for active applications that are currently running. And if you tap on it, it brings up a task manager. Now, right now, we have just rebooted the phone, so there are no task managers. But there are tasks or others to show up in the task manager. And here you can see how much RAM that you have and how much storage. Speaking of which, this has 16 gigs of internal storage. As you can see, it's partitioned between an area to install applications, about 2 gigs for that, and then the rest, 11.36 gigs, is available to store files, which means movies, music, MS Office documents, whatever you want. And if there were an SD card installed, it would report on how much space is available. Since it has 16 gigs of storage, AT&T doesn't bother giving you a card, however. If you want to install a card, you yank off the back. There's this little fingernail grab point right here. And this is the micro SD card slot here right above the battery. So that means you do have to pull out the 1650 milliamp battery to insert or remove a card. The SIM card, though, you can actually get in and out without pulling the battery. So that's kind of reverse of what you usually see. So as is compared to the Sprint version, here we have the Sprint version on the left, and it's 4.5 inch display. Now the interesting thing, it, this phone is not that much bigger. They managed to pack the internals in there a little tighter, I guess, because you're really not suffering that much in terms of device size. You can see there as we overlap them, not much bigger at all. The Sprint version has to be a little bit thicker because it has WiMAX radio in it that is fairly large wireless radio to have inside, and also it has an 1800 milliamp battery. You need that for a WiMAX, it's also a very power hungry technology. Sprint version is a little more rounded and curvy. The T-Mobile version will also be a little bit curvier. But they have the same kind of plastic finish back with the grid pattern on it. And pretty much are identical otherwise spec-wise. Samsung has customized the email application, not the Gmail application, that's standard Google stuff, to create a, a multi-pane view that you might have seen in some of their commercials. So here's just the straight inbox that looks pretty normal. But if you turn it sideways, there you go, the multi-pane kind of thing, and you've got some quick icons to delete and reply and stuff like that. If you tap on a message on the left, there you can see it. Now, it's kind of neat, and it kind of reminds me of like something like the iPad, but the problem is that the resolution isn't really high enough, so what it causes you to end up doing is to do a whole lot of side-to-side -side scrolling here if you actually want to read this message. And if you turn it back to portrait mode, you do have the single-pane view here, which can make it a little bit easier to read, of course. HTML emails can be too wide to fit in something like this. It also has a threaded messaging option for viewing uh, email conversations, which is pretty neat. Samsung's Media Hub is also on board. We've seen that on a lot of Samsung phones and tablets lately, and this is a, a service where you can rent or buy movies from Samsung Media Store. We've got a little scrollable list right here. And works in portrait and landscape modes. Obviously when it plays back the video, it's going to play it in landscape mode. And if you set up an account, you also get DRM rights to play this on your PC as well. So if you just take a look at one of the movies that's here, and we can watch a preview, buy it for $18 or rent it for 4 bucks. And by the way, this only works over Wi-Fi. That is the download part, the streaming part. Afterwards, you can you can play the content to your heart's content. And I believe the first time you run it, it has to be able to connect to the server to check DRM rights. So if you're going to hop on an airplane or something like that, be sure to do that before you get on the plane and have to turn on flight mode. And here the speaker is near maximum volume now. That's Samsung's media hub. You can hear the speaker, it's not bad, it's a little bit thin and tinny. Volume is okay. If you crank it up close to max, you will hear some distortion. How about locally stored content? We're going to check out some movie trailers that we have in 720p and 1080p high profile and see how it does.
and we're going to jump to the hardest thing first, which is a 1080p high profile video. Obviously much higher than the resolution of the display, but in case you want to plug this into your TV or monitor, you'll see that it can handle this no problem. And the Super AMOLED Plus display really is gorgeous for watching videos. Really black blacks, high contrast, eye popping colors. So no problem. Quickly check out a 720p video, but you get the idea it can handle that, no problem. And this one's also high profile. is great. Samsung has customized the video player that's on here and you can see some options that are a little bit different. There's a subtitle option if subtitles are available. You can send something over Bluetooth. You can get details about the video, share the video, and if you take a look at settings there's an outdoor visibility mode. And If you turn that on it super duper cranks the colors. It's really interesting looking. And we'll see now, well, right, retina burning there. Interesting looking. So it really deepens the color saturation and heightens the contrast to make it a little bit easier to see outdoors. And while the Super AMOLED Plus display is beautiful, it could use a little help outdoors. It's not as viewable as, say, the iPhone 4 outdoors. The phone also comes with the Samsung's usual social networking software. Again, the memo pad, we saw the little widget version of that. The mini diary, which is kind of cute and interesting. You can tap to add a photo from your camera at the, this very moment or from gallery and we will shoot a picture of our basil plant. Which looks greener on screen than it does in person. And we can add a location right here and we can add some text. And you can see I've got the swipe keyboard turned on here. You can also use the straight Android keyboard if you like, but well, I like swipe better. It comes with both. And there we go. So you can kind of create a visual and location based diary of what you've been up to. You also get a file manager and AT&T and Samsung include quick light for video chat with the front camera if you don't want to use Google Talk as well. And we've got Quick Office, and this is the full version of Quick Office. You can create documents, not just view them, and you can also edit them. So you can do view PDFs, do MS Word compatible, Excel compatible, and PowerPoint too. You see, I have an option to create a new document right there. Which version I want to do. And it starts me off to create that. If you want to do a Word document, like so. And first you just have the tabula rasa here, the black screen, but if you want to see all your little tools, you can just top, tap the menu button and they all appear down here so you can do things like insert images, zoom in, insert audio, and manipulate text. And now we'll check out the web browser and see how Adobe Flash playback does. Right now we're on the full YouTube site. We're going to check out an HD movie trailer. And we'll use the web browser to do that so it does use Flash and not the mobile player. And we are doing this over AT&T's HSPA Plus network. Bring it out to full screen. And so here we are at 480p full screen. No problem, fast CPU, fast internet connection, really good looking screen. And in terms of browsing regular websites, we'll take a look at our own. The, the, the HSPA Plus really helps, but so does the fast CPU, it really speeds up rendering times here, especially if you've got a lot of Adobe Flash ads running on a site like we do and everybody else does these days. You can see it's quite smooth, pinch zooming works just fine. Portrait to landscape mode switch. Pretty much instant. Very good. And we'll check out the New York Times as well. 
and this is the full site we've selected and not the mobile site pretty busy home page with some embedded videos most of which load and there's the last big ad over there so that's very good data speeds have been good on this we've averaged about 4.5 megs down according to Ucla's speedtest.net application and about 1 meg up which is, is good may not be the fastest we've ever seen on AT&T but that's certainly respectable for their new HSPA plus 4G network phone has the usual trio of Wi-Fi 802.11 BGN Bluetooth plus EDR and a GPS GPS worked just fine in our test with Google Maps and navigation and it has a 1600 50 milliamp battery as we mentioned and battery life is the source by if you've just been watching us record this video you've noticed that the battery has gone down quite a bit already even though 1650 milliamps is a pretty generous battery this phone really consumes a lot of power and it's not managed as tightly as it is on the sprint version of this phone which is interesting in fact we've just dropped into the yellow zone already on the battery so if you get this either plan to get yourself a charger to keep handy or a spare battery if you're going to be a heavy user of the phone so that's the Samsung Galaxy S2 for AT&T. Joins the ranks of the LG Thrill. I thought that's going to be a tough one there because the LG Thrill is only 99 bucks. Also a dual core and it has 3D camera and display. And the Motorola Atrix 4G also. 4 inch, somewhat smaller display, dual core. That one costing the same 199 so it can be a tough choice among those three in AT&T and who knows what else to introduce but certainly if you're loving that Super AMOLED Plus display and you're looking for an upgrade from your Captivate this is definitely bigger, better, faster Captivate. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review.